Electrical outlets. Most people know not to stick a finger or a fork into one. And for many years, PSAs warned us of the dangers of overloading electrical outlets, also known as receptacles. Cause I changed the scene if you know what I mean and lighten this heavy load. You got to be cool with cars, my friend. You got to be cool with cars. But did you know that these days, overloading receptacles is actually a hazard that takes a back seat to something else? Prongs that don't fit tightly into the holes. And this is the outlet. What's that? The outlet? Mm -hmm. That's where the electricity comes out of. Oh, you mean the holes. <laughs> Welcome to Learn Something New by NFPA Journal. When we look at a typical household receptacle and the appliances that plug into them, it's important to first understand the electrical units of measurement at play. Volts, amps, and watts are three units often used when discussing electricity. You've likely heard the terms used before. A 9-volt battery, a 60-watt light bulb. But what are the differences between them? Well, when you're looking at an electrical circuit, which is the path through which charged particles like electrons flow, it can help to think of the electrons like water molecules flowing through a pipe. In this analogy, voltage is often compared to water pressure because it provides a measurement of how forcefully electrons are pushed through the circuit. Our next unit, amperage, is sort of like the volume of water molecules passing through the pipe. So amps measure how many electrons are flowing past a given point in a circuit over one second. Finally, we have watts, which are a unit of power that you get by multiplying volts by amps. A 60 watt light bulb, for example, draws about half an amp of current and has a voltage of 120. And 120 times one half is 60. There are also joules, ohms, and other relevant units, but we won't get into those. So getting back to receptacles, a typical household receptacle can handle about 15 amps of current being drawn from it. NFPA's National Electrical Code requires not exceeding 80% of that, so 12 amps. While that may have been easy to hit, say, 30 years ago, when appliances used more energy because they were less efficient, today it's become increasingly difficult. This power strip with five items plugged in is only drawing about 3 amps of current. What is a more significant concern for electrical safety specialists these days are outlets that may be old or have experienced excessive wear, in which the prongs of cell phone chargers, kitchen appliances, and other devices no longer fit snugly. So what does it mean when that happens, and what should you do about it? Here's NFPA Senior Electrical Content Specialist Dean Austin with more info. Receptacles have manufacturer specifications such as conductor size, conductor type, and also the distance between the prongs or the contacts inside the little, the little holes in the receptacle. Those are created so that the tension pinches on the prongs of the vacuum cleaner plug. And so when those, that tension is on there and everything works great, the vacuum cleaner plug stays in the receptacle and works great. As the receptacle becomes more frequently used as it becomes older, uh, the spring tension on those contacts becomes less and less, which means that current is increasing, which means heat is increasing, which could result in uh, a failure. Hopefully not a catastrophic failure, such as a fire or the receptacle melting, but a failure of the receptacle such as the vacuum cleaner maybe doesn't always work. It just kind of comes on and quits and comes on and quits or the plug falls out. So if the plug of the vacuum cleaner falls out of the receptacle, then you should have that replaced. That needs to be replaced by a qualified individual. This will help to prevent uh, failures. It will also help to prevent uh, potential uh, problems with your equipment. So if it starts falling out, that is telling you that that receptacle is worn out and needs to be replaced. Perhaps the best illustration of how dangerous loose-fitting receptacles can be came just last year 
when firefighters in Massachusetts had to warn teenagers not to participate in a dangerous online trend that involved tapping a penny onto prongs partially inserted into an electrical outlet. Now, all this is not to say that overloading receptacles isn't possible, and it's something that should still be carefully considered. Some devices, like a table saw, still draw currents over 10 amps, meaning you wouldn't want to plug anything except that one device into an outlet. And as always, linking power strips together, sometimes called daisy chaining, is never safe. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, let us know. Like it, leave a comment, or share it with your friends. As always, be sure to subscribe to NFPA's YouTube channel for more content like this. Did you know it's NFPA's 125th anniversary this year? That's right. You can help us celebrate over 12 decades of safety by participating in a year-long series of conferences on topics ranging from electrical safety to marijuana growing facilities. Since May is National Electrical Safety Month, the first day-long conference in this series will be entirely electrical safety focused. That event is taking place May 18th. Head over to nfpa.org slash conference series for more info and to register.